Good morning, folks. It's Tuesday morning, 5th of January. I'm going to come together and read from Proverbs chapter 5 this morning, uh, New Living Translation. Let's hear God's word. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen carefully to my wise counsel. Then you will show discernment and your lips will express what you've learned. For the lips of an immoral woman are as sweet as honey, but her mouth and her, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is as bitter as poison as dangerous as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her set steps lead straight to the grave, for she cares nothing about the path of life. She staggers down a crooked trail and doesn't realise it. So now, my sons, listen to me. Never stray from what I'm about to say. Stay away from her. Don't go near the door of her house. If you do, you will lose your honour and you will lose uh, to merciless people all you have achieved. Strangers will consume your wealth and someone else will enjoy the fruits of your labour. In the end, you will groan in anguish Then, when disease consumes your body. You will say, how I, how I hated discipline. If only I had ignored, hadn't ignored all the warnings. Oh, why didn't I listen to my teachers? Why didn't I pay, t- pay attention to my instructors? I have come to, dr- to the brink of utter ruin. And now I must face public disgrace. Drink water from your own well. Share your love with only your wife. Why spill the waters of your springs in the streets having sex with just anyone? You should reserve it for yourselves. Never share it with strangers. Let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Rejoice in your wife of your youth. She is a loving dear, a graceful doe. Let her breasts satisfy you always. May you always be captivated by her love. Why be captivated, my son, by an immoral woman or fondle the breasts of a promiscuous woman? For the Lord sees clearly what a man does, examining every path he takes. An evil man is held captive by his own sins. They are ropes that catch and hold him. He will die for lack of self-control. He will be lost because of his great foolishness. Amen. And that is Proverbs chapter 5. In some ways quite graphic, you might say. Quite um, explicit in what it says. Um, But there's a couple of ways of interpreting it. You can take it at face value. um, Saying, you know, don't be led astray by somebody who is immoral. Um, Keep everything within your married life the way it should be. Because that's the way God wants it to be. Um... Don't stray from those vows that you have made. Keep those promises. The other way of looking at it as well is a way which is reflected in the Old and the New Testament when it comes to evil and sin and to false religions. Quite often, um, well, in the Old Testament and in Revelation again, false religion is referred to as a prostitute, somebody um, who uh, the people of Israel and Christians stray away from God to this wrong person to follow um, what looks to be attractive, what looks to be good, what looks to be nice, but what in fact turns out to be dangerous and harmful and destructive. And, you know, and, and that's so true. There, there are so many different teachings around the world which at first glance look attractive. They look as if they're, they're, they're goods. Um, But whenever you actually start to look into what they're teaching, it's not the Bible. They teach things which are completely wrong, things which are of man and not of God. And that's the warning which comes through from Solomon. It's a bit ironic coming from Solomon Solomon, because Solomon is known as a pretty much like a womanizer. He has loads of wives, he has loads of concubines. So from that point of view, you're sort of wondering about the, the, the double standard. And that's why you have to see through and see to where it's talking about religion. And that, and that was part of Solomon's problem with his wives. Um, God said to Israel, you know, if, if foreigners come into your land and if, and if foreigners want to stay with you and be part, part of your your family, they, they need to, to take on worshipping God, worshipping me. And not keeping their idols because they are wrong. 
Whereas Solomon, we know just from different readings, part of his downfall was the fact that he let his wives keep their, their foreign religions, their idol worship, and the problems that that caused then for the people. So it is, in a way, ironic whenever you start to read this. But Solomon then is then talking, you could say, from a point of experience, where he has seen the danger that comes from allowing God's word to be corrupted and challenged or changed or, or twisted to meet our own ends rather than taking God's word at what it says and sticking to it. You know, in, in a world today, we're being encouraged to reinterpret the Bible in so many different ways, being, being encouraged to add to it or take away from it. Um, and, and it is something which can be very easy to do and it's very easy to get caught up in. But what we need to do, keep on doing is bringing ourselves back to God's word, just back to reading it and what it means to have that relationship with God. We need to realise as well that we cannot point the finger at anybody and condemn them for what they are doing because none of us have got it right. There's things of which all of us are doing wrong. All that we can do personally is try to walk as true to what the Bible teaches us as we can. It's up to God to point the finger. It's up to God to judge. God is the one who disciplines and corrects us because he loves us. That's what Proverbs has already taught us. We don't discipline each other. It is our Father who does that. And this is our Father's teachings, that we follow him, that we follow the path that he has set for us, that we worship him in the way that he has told us to, and we have that relationship in the way that he has taught us through his word. So let us today be challenged by our own personal walk. There's lots of criticism going on in the news last night and will continue today as well about what other people are doing in, in, in every aspect of life. Let's set that aside for one moment and let's just think personally about our own daily walk with God. Let's think about where we know we get it right. Let's think about where we know we get it wrong and ask God for the strength to put it right. And in those places where you're not sure, again, ask God for his wisdom, his guidance, his leading. Let's pray together. Father, thank you again for your word. Thank you for how it teaches us in such simple terms, but Lord, in ways which really do challenge us and which will continue to challenge us each and every day. Lord, help us to take your word on board and to allow it to change us and transform us for your glory and honour. And Lord, help us not to point the finger at others, but Lord, to examine ourselves, our own personal walk with you. And help us, Lord, to the best of our ability, through your strength, to have that walk as good as it can be, to rely on you as much as possible. So, Father, thank you. Continue with us now this day, we pray. In Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining with me again this morning. See you tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, and around at the same time. Till then, take care. God bless. Bye-bye.